Earth is an easy box, through which you will likely capture the flag, CTF, and be on the harder side of the easy, depending on your experience. There are two flags on this box, a user flag, and a root flag which includes an MD5 hash. This has been tested on VirtualBox, so it may not work correctly on VMware. Settings up There will be no issue with settings up the planet's Earth machine, just follow the steps. Firstly, download the mirror image from Volnhub. Open VirtualBox. Now, click on Import, and then select the downloaded file from the official website. Click Next, then click on Import. Once your import is successful, click on Setting, and then set the network to the host-only adapter. This process will help you in terms of the enumeration phase. Now start both the VM instances. The instance is started and we are ready to move on to the enumeration phase. Enumeration Our first step is to discover the target IP address using NetDiscover. Run NetDiscover-i and mention the interface name. If you don't know the interface name then check it with the ifconfig command. The interface name is eth1. From the scanning, we have discovered the target IP address is 192.168.56.103. We have discovered an IP address, so let's perform a network scan to detect what ports are open, which is already known as an essential part of the enumeration process. This offers us the opportunity to better understand the attacking surface and design targeted attacks. As in most cases, we are going to use the famous network mapping tool called nmap. Where hyphen sc is used to perform a script scan using the default set of scripts. It is equivalent to hyphen hyphen script equals to default. Some of the scripts in this category are considered intrusive and should not be run against a target network without permission. Hyphen sv is used to enable version detection, which will detect what versions are running on what port. We spot three open ports. Where port 22, which is an open SSH 8.6, protocol 2.0. Port 80, which is an Apache HTTP D 2.4.51 Fedora, and. Port 443, which is an Apache HTTP D 2.4.51, Fedora, open SSL 1.1.1. From the port 443, we spotted two host names. Add these two host names to the etc slash hosts file. Open terminal vertically, and then run sudo nano slash etc slash hosts, and then hit enter. Now paste both host names with the IP address. Save it using Ctrl plus X and hit Y and hit Enter. Now, open a browser of your choice, and then visit the following link. If you scroll down, you can be spotted a few encrypted messages that are signed with message key. Let's send a new message to Earth. As you can see, a new encrypted message appears on my screen. Possibly there will be any hidden or hardly accessible directories and pages. This can be possible through directory busting. The tool we are going to use is GoBuster. Where DIR is used for directory and file enumeration mode. Hyphen U is used to specify the target URL. 
Hyphen W is used to specify the path of the word list. We might get lucky, and we found an admin page that may help us find leverage against the target in combination with the credentials. If you click on login, then it will redirect to a login page. We don't have any credentials to get login access, so we have to find out the credentials. After research, I find out that the second DNS, which is a test site that may give us any clue to find out the username and password. Let's visit the second site. Remember, access this site with HTTPS service. Accept risk and continue. Once I click continue, I got a test page in front of my screen. Let me check the page source if there is any clue and I found nothing. So we are going to brute force the directories using GoBuster. Remember to use the hyphen K after the HTTPS link, it is important. After a successful directory busting, we spotted an interesting file that is robots.txt. We discover another interesting file that is testingnotes.txt. Seems to be some developer or admin, who may be left note on the network. From the note, we can confirm that the hexadecimal message is encrypted with XOR, and the key might be in the testdata.txt file. This seems to be like, the testdata.txt file might contain the key for XOR encryptions. So now, we have the key in the know the encryptions type, and we already know what to decrypt. We are going to decrypt the hexadecimal output in the first web page, which is earth.local. The tool we are going to use is CyberChef. You can find out about CyberChef from this video, then click on the i button to watch this video now. Firstly, download CyberChef from their official site by searching on Google. If you found this error then click on network, and then click on the second wired connection. Now download it. Once the download is complete, reverse the network to the previous one. Now extract the downloaded file. Now click on the HTML file. It will redirect to the CyberChef page. Now access the testdata.txt and in another tab. As the messages are in form of hexadecimal, we have to decrypt them to XOR. Drag and drop from hex and the XOR operations to recipe. Input the key that we have found from testdata.txt. Remember, set it to UTF-8. Copy the encrypted message and paste them one by one. It seems that we get Earth climate change bad for humans as a repeating string.
It may be a password of the user Terra. Foothold. Now, we have a username and password. Let's try to log in with the username Terra and password. After successful login, we got a CLI command line interface. Let's try with a simple command. Our assumption was true, and we got command output. You can find out the user flag from var slash earth web. Now we got a user flag on my screen. So let's try to get a remote command line shell using netcat. Input netcat hyphen e slash bin slash bash. Now specify the IP address of your listening machine. If you don't know what is B, then check it by running ifconfig command. The IP address is 192.168.56.102. Set the listening port. Before running this command make sure you have not forgotten to start the listening port using netcat. We got a warning, which means we cannot get a remote connection by using the simplest method. We can bypass this by converting it to its decimal notation. Or, we can encode the command in the base64 format. Open the terminal and input the below command. Now copy this output and switch back to browser paste with base64 decode command. The netcat starts to listen to port 4444 from an unknown source. We have successfully foothold the planet Earth, but we don't have any administrator privileges. Privilege escalation. Let's check our SUIDs and check if there's any way to escalate the root privileges. We found a reset root script that may help us to gain root access. Let's determine the file type of a reset root using the file command. It reports the file type is in a human readable format that is an ASCII text or MIME type. Let me run the script. When I run the script, I got an error message reset failed. Next, we have to trace out the reset root script and check what is the problem with this script. We can't trace this at this place, so upload this file to the local desktop using netcat. Open a terminal vertically and run netcat-lvnp and specify a listening port, and then the output file name. On the reverse connection terminal in input, cat and specify the file name, and then specify the uploaded listener address. The IP address is 192.168.56.102. Now, we have downloaded the reset root file to local storage, verify it by running the ls command. Let's interpret the calls using the ltrace command. If you got this error then simply install it. Let's trace using itrace. From the output, we mark that three files are missing from the shown locations. Therefore, we have to create those files on the target. Let's execute the reset root file again. Reset successfully established, and the password of root is set to earth. Let's switch back to the root user and find out the flags. Congratulations! 
We have successfully exploited Vulnhub VMs. If you have any doubts or queries related to this video, then write me a comment in my comment section.